Hey guys, it's JJ from LP24 Audio. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to make a nasty respace using only built-in plugins uh, in Ableton. This is kind of what we're going to be going for as a final product. You can see the quick chain here along the bottom. And it's going to be done in operator. Three, two, one. <laughs> Anyways, that's the kind of effect we're going to be going for. This sound started its life out as a simple operator patch. Uh, over here we have four oscillators, and on the right hand side here is how they're going to be FMing each other. So when I was creating this sound, what I did is I started by FMing A by B. I'm just going to put in a number here, negative 9. You can play. That's pretty much the FM amount, uh, the volume of that oscillator. The thing that I did that's a little bit different is I switched over to the oscillator tab here and I messed with the harmonics that are present in the second oscillator FMing operator or oscillator A. So when I play a note now, it's got a little bit of it's got a little bit of FM action going on because of that negative nine, but now let's add in a few other harmonics that kind of mess up what the waveform looks like down here. Now when we play this, it's going to be a lot sharper, just like that. So the key with these free spaces is to create a difference in ratio between two oscillators or to detune two oscillators. So here I'm going to add a fine detune, that means sense, um, of about 33. And now when I play this note, you'll notice we're going to get a lot more motion out of this synthesizer. Nice and rich and moving around. Past that, I added a little bit more FM using these other two oscillators, but prior to doing that, I came all the way over here, and I changed the way all these oscillators were interacting to each oscillator now individually affecting oscillator A. So now I'm going to have to tune all of these three to 33 cents up, and now I'm going to set these to two other random amounts, let's say negative 12 and negative 15. Now, by nature, this is going to add a little bit more of that FM effect, and we're going to get a bit of a sharper sound. Nice and rich. You can mess with the harmonics on these other two oscillators. You just have to be careful, because this can be the point where it starts to get too sharp, and adding distortion effects won't really have any benefits. It'll just create more noise. But for now, let's play around with a little bit of these harmonics. Yeah, that's got a nice rubbery texture is the way I'm going to describe it, right in the mid-range, and I kind of like that. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. The other thing I'm going to take a look at is this tab here. I'm click on it. It'll show up over here. I'm going to enable Glide, and then I'm going to find the Voicings tab, just down here, and I'm going to switch it to one voice, and I'm going to up that Glide amount to 100 milliseconds. So now what's going to happen is it's going to be gliding between notes, and it's go now going to be a monophonic instrument, meaning you can only play one note at a time, no matter how badly you want to hold three or four notes. So, cool thing about this is if there's a small gap between notes, it'll jump to the next note. But if you play and hold between, if you play and hold between two notes, it'll slide between those two. Really cool. We're going to add a bit of spread. Uh, the only thing to be cautious about with this is it can really mess up lower end frequencies, which we're going to address later thanks to a mid-side EQ, which is built into Ableton. So we're going to take this, drag it up a little bit, listen to how that sounds. A little bit too much for my liking, I'm going to back it off to, say, 24%. Mm, still a little much, can back that off even further. Yeah, that'll do for now. Okay, after that, let's add a little bit of distortion. We're going to use an amp unit over here. Now, this kind of comes down to your taste. I personally like the clean boost on low percentages. It can be very noisy, 
Um, so you have to be careful with that. I'm also going to change the output over here to dual, so it's still in a stereo configuration. Now we're going to drag our dry wet down as we play it until we're not hearing too much noise. The noise isn't overpowering. <laughs> So that's not too bad. It's got a really crackly feature. Um, we can address that later with a little bit of EQing. Uh, otherwise, you can try the different amp types, see what they sound like, see if you like them. Actually, I kind of like that. That's got a really heavy presence to it. Anyways, we're going to keep that one for now. Yeah, that'll do for now. All right, cool. Um, more distortion time. Yep. Uh, let's grab a vinyl distortion, drop it over here. For me, I find vinyl distortion in small amounts is effective, uh, 0 0.10. Yeah, it creates a little bit of difference in left and right, creating a wider stereo image again. Not that we really need it with this spread we have and with the motion we have over here, but... The distortion does help to a certain extent. To me, it pulls in the highs a little bit, makes it a little more listenable. After that, we're going to grab an EQ8, put it into our chain, uh, and we're going to create basically a notch here. This is kind of going to act like a phaser. Uh, we are going to use a proper phaser after this, but this is just going to be something that we can use and automate up here. Uh, so I'm going to drag that guy, and I'm just going to show automation new lane. draw in a little bit of motion. Uh, generally speaking, you want to be working between 1K and 10K. Uh, anywhere lower than that, and you take away from the impact of the sound, uh, which can really be detrimental in a track. But again, there are other times where you'll want to do that because you know the track overall is too muddy. You need a little bit more space in the low end, yada, yada, yada. That's what it'll deal with. All right, and past that, we're going to drop another EQ on it. But this one, we're going to put into a mid-side configuration. We're going to switch to the side and we're going to enable number one over here, switch it to a four times high pass filter. And we're going to drag that up to, I'm going to call 200 hertz. All right, so what this is doing is shaving off the sides for the low end, leaving you with a mono signal in the bass, which is good. We want that. That's most systems with a subwoofer will need it to be mono in the low end. Um, most club systems are in mono as well. And if you have phasing issues in that low end, it can definitely take away from the impact of your song. So now we're gonna play it again. So you really hear how these two have a pretty good effect on the overall image this thing has. And now we're gonna drop a compressor towards the end of our chain, just to tame it a little bit, relatively fast attack. Automatic release is fine. You can get into specifics depending on the tempo of your song, what you wanna do, it's up to you. And I'm gonna increase the ratio for a little bit more aggressive compression. And what I'm gonna do here is just crush the dynamic range a little bit so that we don't have parts of it that are loud, parts of it that are super quiet. It, it kinda of comes out at one level. <laughs> Before we finish this off, we're going to drop in a phaser right there before our compression. Uh, this is generally to taste. There's nothing super specific about phasers. Um, you can play with the dry wet. That's always a really good effect. A little bit of feedback. For me, if I can hear it too much, it becomes very distracting. If you're using this as a fill base in your drop, absolutely go nuts with it. If it's just a small segment, make it pretty obvious because sometimes that can sound really cool. So now I'm going to play this again with the phaser. So all I'm doing here is adding a bit of motion uh, both ways here. I, I've turned the dry wet down so it's not quite as obvious. I've added a little bit of motion up and down. And that's a pretty cool sound. Past that point, you can add a bunch of other effects. You can add other motion. You can change the FM over here. You can add more harmonics, less harmonics, whatever you want. 
Another good idea would be in this instrument rack here to have a secondary chain uh, putting out the sub. That would be easier and probably a better idea than just doing this side trick here. While it does have the same result, you have more control over your sub volume versus your main volume, which is quite useful. So now that we've got all that, I'm going to copy that MIDI track down and I'm going to turn the first one off and play the second one here. We're going to re-enable automation for that lane there. Drag it up a little bit. There we go. And we've got a sidechain compressor. Uh, all it is is it's taking two audio, uh, which is our drum track here, which is one of the built-in Ableton drum tracks, I believe from Samplification, if I have that right. Anyways, it's one of the built-in packs that comes with the Suite version. And over here we have an EQ, so it's only picking up frequencies below 103. So basically getting it to pick up the kick. It's responding fairly quickly with a high ratio, which means it's going to push it down a little bit whenever that kick comes in, avoid it, that muddiness that can happen. And we're going to play our bass out in 3, 2. <laughs> Not a bad sound. Personally, I might even turn the spread off at this point. It just seems to be creating too many phasing issues. Um, that's to taste. If you can find another way to tame that, that's great. Maybe even 1% would be enough. <laughs> Yeah, that added a lot more focus to the sound. Anyways, that's building a re-space from scratch. That gives you some ideas on what you can do. Uh, of course, you can go nuts with the effect. You can add all sorts of stuff, whatever you need. Uh, another good idea is reverb. You can drop in just a simple reverb send over here. That way you can kind of hear it tail off. That's a really cool effect. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do. Otherwise, this has been JJ with LP24audio.com, just walking you through a basic free space here uh, using only built-in Ableton effects. See ya.